Well, we're very happy to welcome Peter Moroni, Man of the Hour, Executive Chairman of Yamana Gold, the company he founded back in 2003, agreeing to that takeover by Goldfields. Peter, thanks very much indeed for joining us. Andy, I'm happy to be here. It's a testament to you, you could say, that you got that big premium of 30% from Goldfields. Well, um, I prefer not to look at it as a premium, Andy, so much as, uh, if you don't mind me saying, it's intrinsic value. And I've been saying this for the longest time. It's about paying fair value. Uh, and if one is paying fair value and it happens to reflect itself as a premium because the share price is not reflecting fair value, it is about fair value at the end of the day. It's not about the premium. That's certainly my take on it. What about your role with the company, Peter? Will you be sticking around? Andy, these things are, are normally, certainly in the context of the premium being paid, designed as a takeover bid, Normally, the, the senior most management of the acquired company does not stay. Mm -hmm. But these are things that do not form parts of agreements. They are not conditions to the agreements. It's entirely to the discretion of the board of directors of the buying company. If they should wish to consult with their board, they can. But it's entirely to the discretion of the board of directors of the buying company if they should wish to see that uh, some of uh, the uh, myself would uh, continue to stay involved. My objective was to deliver value for our shareholders, including myself. Uh, it, it is uh, uh, not consequential to that uh, to talk about um, what is, is and, and may not be a continuing role. Right. So nothing has been fixed in that area. And nothing has been discussed in that area. Oh, okay. I think the, I think the way to look at it is that because of the premium being paid and the way that this is designed, um, there's a redundancy. And it happens to be that uh, I, th I am part of that redundancy. Uh, and um, hopefully shareholders will say, well, he's done his part to deliver value mm -hmm. uh, and, um, and move on from there. Right. What are you going to do, Peter? Are you going to take on a small development project or are you done with gold mining? If you do leave, are you done with gold mining or will you uh, get involved with a junior project, do you think? I think there's a universe of possibilities out there. I think that there are broken toys that can be mended. I think that there are overlooked toys in the sandbox uh, that uh, shareholders should be looking at. Uh, and hopefully with a little bit of the wisdom that comes from almost a couple of decades, having taken this company public almost two decades ago, uh, hopefully shareholders will look at it and say, well, we've trusted him to create value in this company and all the transactions that have been done. And as you might recollect, in some of those transactions, there was certainly an initial reaction that was not entirely positive. And then it became very apparent that it should be looked at differently. And hopefully that will garner well and people will say, hey, if he presents an opportunity, then we should take a look at it. But for now, mm -hmm. my entire efforts and devotion is to making sure that we complete this deal because of the quality of company that it creates and the value for the amount of shareholders. It's a significant company, isn't it? I'm hearing that it's the world's fourth biggest gold producer, production um, above three million ounces a year. Well, I, I go further. It's actually, if we look at it over the course of the next year or so, it is the third largest producer. Ah. Uh, it is, this, I believe, the second largest in terms of reserves, a reserve life index. Uh, and it is the fourth largest in terms of market capitalization, but that's where there's the potential for the upside. Uh, what I think is even more compelling, certainly interesting, is that this company has an unparalleled growth on the combination occurring, and it is the best growth profile of all of the senior companies, the four senior most, five senior most companies. That's interesting. Where's the big growth going to come from? Well, initially, and that's what I think it should be compelling, uh, and again, as I said, interesting, but I believe compelling mm -hmm. uh, to the Yamada shareholders, a big part of that comes from two of their assets imminently. So while we're engaged in Jacobina increasing its production level by roughly 50,000 ounces this year, they're putting into production an entirely new mine whose life of mine production is 400,000 ounces per year. But its production platform in the first few years of production is between 500 and 600,000 ounces per year. And one of the lowest costs, if not the lowest cost in the industry, my recollection is below 500, $550 per ounce 
all in costs. So that would accrue, that cash flow, that production growth would accrue to the benefit of all shareholders, including the Yamana shareholders, on completion of this deal. This deal should complete by the end of the third quarter, early in the fourth quarter. And that means that that production and, and cash flow growth, literally just around the corner early next year, would accrue to the benefit of all shareholders, including the new shareholders that come from Yamana. Yeah, I'm just looking. I mean, of course, and I, I think you referred to this, a one-day move in a stock really doesn't mean, mean very much. RBC noting that there could be some churn in your shareholder base because you will be dropped from some indices, naturally, um, because you won't, be, uh, list, you won't be in a standalone company anymore. So there could be some noise in the share price over the next few days. Well, we, we, are, we like to see ourselves as um, uh, bigger than we are, but we are a company with a a certain production level, roughly a million ounces of production per year. Mm -hmm. But our market capitalization is in the range of $5 billion. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I'd argue that it is not that clear that there would be that type of churn okay. because we're really not in a lot of indices as a result of the size that we are. Oh. But with the size that we become, we become far more compelling, not only to some indices world, worldwide, but to a lot of those shareholders who are looking for size and scale. Mm -hmm.